Hello and welcome to what is the final Worlds 2022 video, or otherwise known as the most common champion matchups from patch 1218, the Worlds patch. Um, I've been doing this throughout all of spring and summer, covering the most common champion matchups of each patch within a vacuum. Obviously, um, we know that it's not as black and white as Jax versus Aatrox or Lulu versus Nami and the like. Um, there are an infinite amount of variables that go into this player diff, team diff, jungle proximity, itemization, ruins. I mean, the, the list is endless, right? It's infinite. Well, there, there is a number, I'm sure, on it. But regardless, we're not going through that. So, we're just going to look at this. Um, most common matchups. When I do this, if it hasn't happened 10 times, I don't go over the win rate all that much because I feel like, I mean, I know 10 matchups isn't a great sample size, but, um, I mean, it's, it is what it is. Anything below 10, I'm just not even gonna, to even really broach too much. Um, the thing with this patch though, is that it is the most diverse patch we've ever seen at Worlds. A ton of champs were picked, well over a hundred, um, completely smashed the record. It was incredible. Um, I think Riot deserves some credit for that. I think people, you know, like to harp on Riot a lot. And I'm not going to like, you know, uh, I don't know, be a shill or something. But at the same time, I think we need to be, acknowledge that this world allowed for a lot of meta diversity, especially at support, but also in top lane, that gave us a vibe that was that was fun. I mean, over here, normally I don't do this, um, but over here I've got a lot of interesting picks we saw once or twice. So, a lot of them are, I mean, some of them are troll. A lot of them you could say are troll. You could say all are, you know, depending on how you feel about champ, which champs. But um, there are a lot of weird picks, a lot of fun picks. Um, so in top lane, as you see here, 30 different champions selected in top lane. Some of the interesting ones that we saw a one-off of was ADD's Teemo and Zillion. Teemo stinks. Zillion, not a common top lane matchup. Um, Enchanter meta support top is not really a thing. Um, Garen, Darius, Shen. Shen, I guess, is, is semi-reasonable. I know... Shen is not meta, but Shen at least is in the um, realm of possibility. Um, where Darius, Garen especially, Garen is right alongside Teemo in terms of Int. But um, a lot of weird picks in top lane, right? Um, now, the meta was Aatrox and what you want to play into it. We saw four different matchups occur at least six times. All of them... Revolving around Aatrox. Jax and Aatrox, Fiora, Nar, and Kennen. Jax was the only champion within a vacuum to have a positive win rate against Aatrox with over five matchups. Going five and three. So really that one game that made it five and three over four and four. I mean, it could have been three, six, nine against, I don't know, Wonder or... I mean, I'm not... I'm just citing... You know, I'm just citing Breathe versus ADD. You know, who knows? Who knows who it was. But um, maybe Jax just beat Aatrox five out of eight times. That's also reasonable. But, um, you know, that's why I kind of don't really go for win rates too much um, when it's not ten matchups. Because it's like, okay, well, one flip is the difference. Um, but Aatrox was dominant. Nobody could really do anything into Aatrox. We saw Yone become a thing towards the mid... Oh, geez, sorry about that. My God almighty. Um, we saw, uh, Aatrox, yeah, we saw Yone be picked in Aatrox, especially by Zeus in the mid to late, um, parts of, uh, you know, group stage and, um, quarters and semis. And it actually looked like a viable counter that other people just didn't try earlier in the, in the, um, tournament. And that's kind of what happens. Meta changes over time, which allowed for a lot of diversity. You know, this moving ball of a meta really, really was was interesting. So, in the jungle, we had 21 different champions selected. Some interesting ones. Canyon's Kane, Very viable. A very good and strong pick. Levi's Karthus. We saw how dominant that was. That was surprisingly disgusting. Levi, a free agent, by the way. Um, 
and Inspired pulled out his fiddlesticks. It was um, not good um, for uh, EG. They they lost that game against JDG, but I mean, it it, it was nice to see, uh, but I kind of put it alongside Timo and Garen in terms of maybe we don't do that again um, when it's not even relatively meta. Now, most common matchups, Graves versus Viego, Sejuani versus Viego, and Maokai versus Sejuani. Um, so, how do I feel about this? Well, Graves was the best pick. We figured that out in, in the end of um, plans and groups and onward. Like, Graves was super strong. It was either first pick or, or ban. Um, Viego got into there as well. Viego becoming very popular and oftentimes being left up. Um, so that's why the Viego is probably the most commonly picked jungler. Um, Sedge was picked in top and jungle, so his numbers might be a little, or their numbers might be a little all over the place. Um, the interesting thing, though, that I found about the jungle was the Maokai. Maokai versus Sejuani went 7-1. and one. Um, Maokai was disgusting at this tournament. Top lane, I think, gave it a bad rap because some players just outright sucked at it. Um, and some junglers sucked at it, Canyon. Um, but, let me see, I am recording. But, um, you know, when it was picked into Silas, it was bad. Because it would steal the ult, you lose, <laughs> trading ultimates with a Maokai, Maokai loses a lot of value, right? Um, but teams in groups and quarters and onward just didn't pick it like it would be first pick whatever on blue side and then they'd be like well you could take silas maokai and it's like they're not taking it they're taking viego they're trying to take a bot lane they're trying to do this trying to do that and i understand like draft is what it is and it, it goes deeper than that but it's like this champion is not losing like sample size is one thing but, like, when it is extremely lopsided, like, the Sejuani is not a counter to the Maokai if it is 7-1. Like, it's not. Um, and, I mean, it was just, it was really, really crazy to see. Because even when Maokai was played in top and support, it was good, except against the Silas. Just overall, the champion was cracked. And we didn't see it. And DRX picked it in the finals and won with it. Not a shock at all. And um, I feel some teams just ego picked away from it because they didn't want to pick it. And um, when push comes to shove, the team with the, the, the team willing to do more and willing to drop the ego won, which was DRX in my opinion. Barrel dropping a lot of ego, willing to pick pretty much anything to make the lane work. Um, and, uh, you know, they... They succeeded because of it. Now, in mid lane, we had 21 champions picked as well. Um, some interesting ones. Zach, Anivia, and Scion. Yes, we had a Zach at this event twice, if you recall. Being picked into Silas. I believe in play-ins by Froggy both times. Going into this event, Zach got a little bit of hype. Um, it was being played, I think, by Caps and um, other mid laners. But Froggy was the only one willing to pick it, which makes a lot of sense. Um, Saigon Buffalo, Gam Sports, Vietnam, pretty much. That is Vietnam, no surprise, um, willing to pick something a little out of the box. And it won a game. So was it viable? Eh, well, it did the job. And I don't remember who was against, but it did the job. Um, Anivia, I'm not a big fan of Anivia, really. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, it's interesting to see it for funsies, but really I'm not a big Anivia fan. Scion, I think, was play, played by Seiya in mid. Um, either Seiya or Tinones. I forget who it was. Um, but it was in play-ins. It was, I mean, you try to play tank mid, trying to make something happen. And uh, it didn't work. I think it was against, like, um, you know, one of those games against RNG, DRX, Fnatic, or EG. Like, it was a, you know, you're against a major region. You got to kind of get, get interesting. And um, it didn't work. But... Here, you see we have two matchups that occurred more than 10 times. The mid meta was really um, clear. 
is clear. So Akali, Silas, Azir, Victor. We see that all over here. 13 times Akali versus Silas, Akali versus Azir, Akali being left up. Silas being banned or Azir being banned. We saw in plans Azir being super, super strong in the hands of Humanoid and Zekka. Um, and then you see Azir versus Silas nine times, Victor versus Azir seven times. Silas was cracked though. It's probably, I think it definitely had the strongest win rate in mid um, overall. Going nine and four against Akali in mid. That is, you know, pretty lopsided. Now Akali versus Azir. Akali won six to four. Similar to the Jax Atrox thing, one matchup flips it. Um, but nevertheless, I thought Azir and Victor were not. Um, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't really feel it out of them. Um, and we saw Silas dominating pretty much every matchup. We saw Victor struggling in a lot of matchups. I mean, you know, we can cherry pick results and things like that out of a champion. But when you look at like the, the entire um, sample, the bigger the sample size, the more indicative of what the champion is. Um, and I thought Victor was just like bait. I thought it really was the bait pick of the, the mid lane. Um, so many people getting caught out in lane and maybe it was just people not playing it properly. That was a thing too. We saw it in quarters and semis and, and finals having moments, but, um, it really never was a pick that I looked at and said, wow, we got to watch out for the victor here. Like it just was kind of just whatever. Um, now bot lane, there aren't as many matchups here because really bot lane was a lot of different things. Um, the only one that happened, we saw 19 AD carry bot laners picked. Um, some interesting ones, Nyla, Samira, similar to the Shen situation, uh, and Fiddlesticks. Um, well, even more just, just the Shen. Um, yeah, really, what is there to say? Um, you know, just two clear AD carries um, that kind of stink, and they were picked anyways. Um, not all that overly interesting. Um, now, what was, was we saw Lucian versus Nami. Uh, uh, not Lucian versus Nami. They were together. Um, Lucian versus Aphelios, 11 times. Aphelios coming out ahead, 6-5. to five. Um, Now, this is not indicative of me saying Aphelios is better than Lucian. However, watching a few co-streams and things like that, a lot of people did believe that Aphelios Lulu was a counter to Lucian Nami in the early parts of the tournament and throughout as a viable option and we saw it pretty much be a handshake and then Lucian started getting banned um, alongside the Caitlyn and the Aphelios kind of dropped out we saw Varus a lot towards the mid to late parts of the tournament and um, you know after that Varus versus Callista we saw that more in the quarters and um, onward because Guma's picking Varus, Deft serping Varus, Ruler, um, all these um, Korean 80 carries, it kind of just became like, okay, this is their meta. And because all those teams moved on and they had been scrimming each other, they just had formed this meta and that's what it was. And it kind of put the bot lane in a position where it wasn't as strong, um, a little bit more utility oriented. And I mean, it caused Gen G a lot of problems. And um, I mean, I feel like it caused T1 problems in the finals as well. I thought that the bot lane was a position of strength should have picked lanes that could dominate bot lane and carry that way. Um, obviously, Zeus is very good, and you'd assume Zeus would beat King in, but um, I still think taking the, the game out of the hands of the bot lane was was a problem. So, Kesa versus Aphelios as well. We saw a lot of Kesa and play-ins. Did not see it a lot going forward. Maybe if RNG had, um, you know, not had the COVID situation, played more scrims and things like that, maybe they would have developed a, a Kesa meta, given Gala is so good at it. Um, Kesa might have went 5-0 and against Misfortune. We saw a lot of Misfortune at this tournament as well. Struggling, not that good. Um, Caitlyn, not even on here because it got banned so much. It didn't happen overly. Um, I mean, didn't get picked a lot. Uh, support. So support was the um, tied with top lane, 30 different supports picked at this event some interesting ones we saw singed bot that was lahens it is what it is um nasus by trimby a little bit int um you know he just kind of gave it a go 
and uh, it was bad. It was not good in that in that matchup. Just one second. Sorry about that. So we saw it work, uh, not work the Nasus. It was it was very bad. Um, now on Twitter, LS I believe said that it wasn't a good spot for it, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, but Trimby gave it a go. Was bad. Um, we saw a, I thought we saw a rumble, but I may have missed it when I, I quickly, briefly went through my um, uh, spreadsheet just as I added this at the end and I might have missed it. Um, but we also saw a Syndra. Uh, that's where the smudge happened. I dropped this board before um, filming this and that was where the smudge is. So Syndra, um, I believe Gam played it into DRX when DRX pulled out Heimer bot lane. Gam didn't expect it, so BA played it, and it was pretty bad. Um, that was, I think, a, a um, you know a keyboard smash moment of like, oh my god, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Okay, we're going Syndra. This might work. Let's go Syndra. They had a high prio on Syndra as a team. That was kind of weird. Um, geez, almost had a sneeze. Um, so, Singe, Nasus, Syndra. Now, obviously, because we only had one really common bot lane matchup, we had one really common support matchup. It was Lulu and Dinami, just the same as um, Aphelios and Dilution. And Lulu gets the edge, 6-5. to five. Um, I hope that's had 6-5 to five for bot lane. If I said 5-4, to four, obviously 9 does not equal 11. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. So, support. Um, once we got into the main event, support became literally like... A, a chaotic mess and a chaotic mess of counters of of picks and decisions and um because here leona versus nautilus and alistar versus nautilus are the only other two matchups as support that happened five or more times i didn't go five for these because um i mean i don't have enough room on the board for all that so um and, and those happen early on in the tournament like the way my spreadsheet is, like, those are the first matchups. Like, those were, like, literally the opening um, games of the tournament. And uh, after that, you know, engaged champions kind of dropped off going into into um, the main event. And it just became enchanters and, and anything you wanted. Um, and in the end, it became a big, big deal. We saw the Heimerdinger bot lane become a massive problem for everybody. And... Um, it is just crazy how it came about because, like I've said this multiple times, but if you missed it, Top Esports banned it against DRX in groups and DRX hadn't played it. They had they didn't know why it was being banned against them. They're like, well, if it's being banned against us and they think it's that strong, we probably should give it a go. And they rode that all the way to the end. And... Um, it was incredible. We saw Barrel play some Ash, play Bard in game five, pulling it out. Like, I mean, the, the guy really, really um, set the tone. And um, it was incredible. It was incredible. The support meta was absolutely astounding. As somebody that uh, played support, um, you know, when I did play, um, it, it was it was fun. It was fun to see a lot of different supports being picked. So that's it for uh, this video going over the world's patch 1218. In hindsight, comment down below. What matchups or champion picks are you going to remember worlds for? Um, tomorrow is going to be a similar video, but probably a lot longer, where I'm going over all of season 12. Um, a cumulative um, video. I'm almost done going through my summer numbers in um, my spreadsheet and then going to add these world's numbers into it tonight and tomorrow will be a much bigger video so thank you for watching this should put a close on worlds 2022 thank you for sticking with me yesterday we lost a few subs so hopefully you subscribe to the channel so that number can go up um, like the video share it if you really did enjoy it the more the merrier follow me on twitter join the discord become a youtube member three dollars a month it helps me supports the channel keeps it alive otherwise i'm screwed ten dollars a month same deal except you get extra nfl american football content if that interests you 
uh last friday i did go over a video where i went over my plans for the off season that's going to be popping up around me now if you want to click on that and you see things that you might like ideas that you like subscribe hit the notification bell and you'll know when i upload so thank you for watching and i hope you come back for more content